going on, Internet? I'm Christopher Peterson on the Momocon show floor, here with Matthew talking Guns of Icarus. How are you doing, Matt? Doing great. Uh, Momocon has been wonderful to us, and I can't wait to talk about airships. All right. So for people who haven't heard of Guns of Icarus yet, what's kind of the elevator pitch? The elevator pitch is big airships, big guns, and the most teamwork you've ever had in game. Four people crewing, flying, shooting uh, from a ship, and just having fun. How do teams get formed? So they get formed, either you invite your friends in, you join into an open lobby, you use the matchmaker. Basically, you can always have a crew if you want, or you can fill them with AI slots, play by yourself, and really just experience and explore the game. What is everybody's uh, role on the crew? So it's decided at the start, who's ever at the top is uh, the captain, which is normally a pilot, though there are unique builds where that's not the case. Everyone else is either a gunner or engineer, this, they can be decided by themselves, or the captain can recommend. The players still have the choice to ignore that recommendation, of course, but it, it is that teamwork aspect of well, what's going to be best, how do we take on all these unique enemies. Does the captain stay the pilot the whole time, or can they even kind of shift that around? So anyone can do anything. So an engineer can gun, they can hop on helm, the gunner can go anywhere, and the pilot can hop on guns as well. And the big thing that, it, uh, that there is is the pilot has more pilot tools, so he can turn fast or do all these little things, just as the gunner has different ammos, and the engineer has more repair options. So everyone can be like, it's like pilot hops off and does some gunning, pilot can be like, oh, no, or engineer can quickly hop on, turn the ship a little bit, keep the angle up. That sounds fantastic. Uh, what different game modes are available for players? So we have seven different game modes right now. Some of the most prominent have you uh, attacking giant bases, defending your own, chasing down convoys, defending VIPs, setting up blockades, or even just search and destroy for different objectives and survival. Uh, so when I got a chance to play Guns of Icarus, uh, there was a lot going on. It, it felt really chaotic as a beginner. Um, what do you feel like the learning curve is uh, for most players? Uh, it's definitely a bigger learning curve, though. You didn't get to experience the tutorial. We had to skip through that. So we did. We have built uh, three tutorials. This is our third iteration. It's a lot stronger, a lot more pithy, I guess, quick and fun. Um, but there's still that learning curve. That the biggest thing you have to get over, though, is that you can't work alone. That you can't be like, oh yeah, no, I'm just I'm hitting every shot. I'm perfect. It's no, you have to communicate and work together and actually be a team. So once people get that, even I've seen the lowest level players take on the highest just because they had a captain who said, nope, here's how we're going to work together. So. Uh before we talk to Guns of Icarus, uh, you have the team matches, but there's kind of a larger meta game also to play uh, that you mentioned, kind of like Risk in all the countries. Yeah, so um, every whenever you start the game, you're going to join a faction, which you can uh, leave at any point at a cost of some of your uh, faction level. And this faction it has a place on a world map. In every match you play, you get to decide where your efforts go to. Are you attacking one territory? Are you defending another? And you get gold and other resources for the bonuses, and you can buy either troops, walls, spend uh, money for spies, uh, for missions, and a bunch of different other objectives. And you have to work all together with your faction to, to put your efforts in the right place. There are leaders who can leave messages to every single person in the faction and even give bonuses if they're deployed in different locations. How's the community kind of uh, gravitated towards the faction system? They've embraced it in an amazing way. Um, and really amazing in the sense of they backstab each other all the time. Factions, <laughs> as leaders, will make these secret deals behind closed doors and say, okay, no, no, you know, hey, I won't attack you. We won't attack your faction. We just want to take this area. And they'll work together for a little bit, and then you'll see the instant moment they just sweep in and take territory from the guys who were their allies just the day before. <laughs> So for Guns of Icarus uh, Alliance, what's uh, some of the new pieces that play for the expansion that players are going forward to? So they can look forward to six new player ships, seven new guns, uh, all seven game modes across nine new maps, uh, and that entire uh, M or the MMO Risk faction work that, oh, fair play. The big thing though is even for PvP players, the reason we brought these two games together, the Online and the Alliance, is we want to keep supporting PvP. And we brought in new guns, new ships, and new maps from Alliance in there. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great to be here. And thank you out there for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this interview and that we leveled up your Guns of Icarus IQ.